this video, we are going to be talking about the best ways to destroy Centurion. Now, if you guys are a fan of the channel, go ahead and leave a like. And if you are not yet subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe, guys. We just hit 7,000. Let's try and keep up the momentum and hit 8,000. And of course, guys, before we start the video, like, comment, subscribe, and let's get right into the video. Before we start the video, guys, I am proud to announce that I've officially partnered with LDB Duel, and we're teaming up to celebrate this monumental milestone of 7,000 subscribers by doing a giveaway. The giveaway is super simple, guys. Click the link down below. Make sure you're subscribed to Other Gaming, as well as following LDB Duel on their Instagram account. With that, you guys have a chance of winning this brand new and super awesome Toon Pot of Greed mat. Now, this mat is good for all sorts of TCGs, not just Yu-Gi-Oh! You can also count your money on it as well. Check the links down below, guys. The giveaway will be going on for about a week, and without further ado, let's get back into the video. All right, guys, so now we are jumping quickly into the video now. This is my personal take on how to destroy and be Centurion. I will try to go as in-depth as possible on specific interactions and rulings as well, guys. You guys can see I have a bunch of cards here. Don't worry about the layout. I'll explain it all. But starting off, guys, of course, we are going to start off with the hand traps now. Ask Blossom and Joyous Spring is a little interesting one because it's okay against, like, the Premier Normal Summon, which is the main card you want to stop because Premier has the effect where she can kind of get the ball rolling. And you can't really Ash um, Stand Up Centurion on the field spell where you discard and uh, scale or activate sorry so as blossom premiere is pretty good you can also ask Bot blossom pot of prosperity i don't know why that was a tongue twister but you can also ash blossom pot of prosperity when they go for three and or six depending what i like to do is personally i like to hold ash blossom for like turn three to four and then when they go into legatia where legatia's effect has the effect where um if this card is best summon you can draw one card then you can destroy one card so if you ash blossom the first effect which is going to be the draw they cannot destroy it. so ashing it is pretty legit um of course um depending on what you want to do you probably want to go ahead and ash blossom the primera or any of their other like extender ish cards but again ash blossom by herself if you do only just have the one ash blossom i would most likely save for legacia you know what i mean um but i guess that's it for the ash blossom right it's it's good but it's not that good moving on to another card that's super spicy is dd crow now dd crow has all sorts of applications in that deck right so one of the main applications is during the end phase legacia has the effect where she says during the end phase you can place one non single centurion monster from your hand or graveyard in your spawn trap card zone as a face-up continuous trap card. Now, a lot of people say that this is the choke point because what they want to do is they want to take their Legatia that's in the graveyard um, and go ahead and put that one in scale or place it in the spawn trap card zone, meaning that they have the follow-up play for Primera being able to summon it out. The downside to that is they it really telegraphs their play, you know what I mean, if they don't have the Primera already in the spawn trap card zone. So you can go ahead and DD Crow that in response to Legatia and now they go ahead and lose out on that. But that's really good, right? And of course, that's super good. But what happens if they have two Primera or if they just use the Primera from hand right this is what i'm gonna tell you guys there's a very important super crucial interaction that you will only know if you either googled it or you protect all this video right now you feel me so basically this is what's gonna happen okay during their turn the geisha will go ahead um during the end phase and put premier in scale so now they have the regular combo where they go trudea in one um premier in the other and they go boom boom and then they go field spell effect premier effect but then in response to the field spell they always go emeth effect and emeth has this effect where during your opponent's turn if this card is in your hand or graveyard and always in the graveyard you can target one centurion monster you control accept it place it in your spell and trap card zone as a face-up continuous trap and if you do special in this card also you cannot spell summon for the rest of this turn blah blah whatever right something very important about this guys now again remember Yu-Gi-Oh is for some reason you need to be an english major to understand what's going on i actually had to google this and confirm with many other people as well this effect means that it tries to um uh what is it called it tries to um uh, resolve as much as possible. I don't know it took me so long. So meaning that if Emmeth gets disrupted in the graveyard, he'll still try and put the card in the spawn trap card zone. Meaning that when they go chain link one, chain link two, and then they go Emmeth effect in grave target, like let's say the true data to put back. If you DD Crow the Emmeth, Emmeth gets banished, but it tries to resolve as much as possible, putting the Trudea into the spawn trap card zone. Now the board is literally Legatia and Primera, and they cannot conduct a Synchro Summon because there's no level 5 million Synchro Monster. I mean, this is already level 5 million. So it goes ahead and stuns them. So if you're playing DD Crow for decks like Purely, Unchained, um, Cheer Element, things of that nature, um, DD Crow absolutely has great implications against them and stuff like that. So again, make sure you guys go ahead and understand the ruling. Um, and then again, always confront or talk to your um head judge just make sure but moving on guys we are going to be talking about ghost against snow rabbit now this card kind of went up in popularity i don't know how good it is meta relevant wise but again if you want to play cards to target specific decks um this card is absolutely bonkers because 
not only can you go ahead and ogre the legation on board turning off the end phase effect however they still do get the draw so you can ogre any of these spell and trap card effects the main one um i didn't put it here but it's going to be trudea now trudea is the main one and the reason why i say trudea is the main one is trudea has the effect where she specifically says um blah blah whatever um during the main phase right you can place this card you control and one century monster from your hand or deck accept it in your spell and trap card zone as continuous traps note that she says you can place this card and one card you control or sorry uh, this card you control plus the other one so if you end up ghost ogling this card she does not go to spawn trap card zone meaning that she does not get the other extender meaning that you turn off their board completely especially if they know summoned it. alternatively you can go ahead and ogre any of these scale effects you just want to watch out because premier has the effect where while this card is a continuous trap level five or higher century on monster you control cannot be sure by card effects so you just want to watch out for that like if they have this it's not worth it to ogre but you know what i mean ogre is pretty legit in terms of um these spawn trap card effects so again Ogre is a pretty good card. It's also a very good six card as well, similar to DD Crow as well, right? Um, Ash Blossom's okay, but um, having good cards that are good um, with your five card hands or six card hands is very good. Um, similarly, Effect Veiler and Imperm. More importantly, Imperm because Imperm is a six where Veiler isn't. Um, but Veiler is really good because it does what Ash Blossom doesn't do. So Ash Blossom negates one effect. Veiler sticks to the whole card. Ash Blossom also cannot negate Trudea, whereas Veiler can. Um, and again, note one thing is that Ash Blossom will only stop the one effect, um, which is whatever, right? But when you have Veiler, you stick it, and then it means that they can't use the effect um, and things of that nature. And then Imperm is really good because you can save Imperm for your turn, and then you can go, like, with priority Imperm Crimson Dragon, meaning that Crimson Dragon must be Chainlink 2, meaning that when they summon Hot Red, because Hot Red is a when, and Crimson Dragon summon was on Chainlink 2 or higher, not a Chainlink 1, Hot Red will miss timing, so it's very important to note that if Crimson Dragon's effect is not Chainlink 1 or not the first effect that activates, Hot Red will miss timing. So again, this it's pretty important to, like, force your opponent's Crimson Dragon. Alternatively, you can go ahead and Imperm Premier and Trudea, especially when they're like trying to play around infinite impermanence, it's probably better to do that. Um, you can also Veiler and or Imperm Legacia as well because it turns off the end phase effect to go ahead and scale. So you can place one non-synchro. So they end up losing material, which is going to be one of these two. Um, so it makes their like um, Emmeth and things of that nature a lot more worse. So again, it's pretty good. And then similarly to DD Crow, the Bishops are very good. Of course, Druid Swarm is like a lot better because Druid Swarm can kind of like automatically out any of these monsters so again Druid Swarm Bishos are really good especially when you pair it with like other decks um it's also good in the mirror match as well because if you Druid Swarm and then you have the Primera you can go ahead and synchro into a Baron and then Druid Swarm send away things of that nature super dope um in that regard so again Bisho is very similar Mourner is also a really good card so Mourner's initial thing was like Mourner sucked because like there was the whole like turn player priority so mourner is pretty good because when they summon crimson dragon you can go chain link one mourner because it's your turn because you have priority and then chain link two crimson dragon and then crimson dragon does not resolve or it does resolve but you know what i mean it ends up summoning the hot red and then still misses timing so mourner is really good um kaijus are another popular one because basically you just draw for turn um the centurion cards kind of because of like the way priority works turn player always has priority in like the open game state because nothing has happened or occurred when i enter the main phase you can go ahead and just kaiju their legacia they can no longer do the crimson dragon lock to have some another legacia so it is really good in that regard and then moving on so i guess i would say those are like the board breakers quote unquote moving on to other spicy tech cards trap is a pretty good one it's good in the mirror match it's good in general if you're playing a synchro deck can't be normal summoner set must be flushed from your hand by sending one phase up trap your opponent controls to the graveyard more than likely they will have at least one trap card which is going to be the one off of trudea because trudea summons herself so she uses her effect then goes ahead and places herself and another one and then the other one swaps out so there's always a trudea so you can always munch the trudea if not um during the end phase you can go ahead and munch the primera and when they do not have the tuner they lose out on a lot and especially in the mirror match being a level four dark tuner that you can just like summon out randomly is really good um another one of my spice texts is honestly electric virus now don't aim for this this card says this right and electric virus is kind of an old card so you can discard this card to your graveyard then you can go ahead and target one machine or dragon type monster your opponent controls Take control of that target until the end phase. Remember this one thing, okay? Hot Red Dragon Archfiend King Calamity Boom Guy says this. Um, when this card is single summoned, you can activate this effect. For less this turn, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects on the field. Your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to this card activation. Remember that, right? On the field. Meaning, so this is important to note, guys. Meaning that cards that act in the hand, so like hand traps, things of that nature, you can still absolutely use. Meaning that you can go ahead, use Electrovirus, right? discard to take the hot red and then use hot red to attack over the legacia and then main phase two you can go ahead and throw on a typhon or you can go ahead and throw on like anything else and kind of deal with 
some sort of their board i guess technically speaking you can do that so it's pretty good um in that regard and then alternatively moving on to the same thing where hand effects work um decks like unchained and decks like chairman can still absolutely play because they still have hand effects they have graveyard effect they still have like problematic monsters where like they can mess around and make like an sp and still have disruptions so it's really annoying to your opponent another card is going to be cast here with fenrir now fenrir is really good because you can special summon fenrir on their turn or on your turn sorry and then they're forced to not have to use premier effect because if they use premier effect chain link one and then they use stand up chain link two when they summon crimson dragon fenrir will resolve on the separate chain meaning that because your turn player priority fenrir will be chain link one to target the crimson dragon crimson dragon must be chain link two they miss timing so again if it's a good player he won't use it and then fenrir's like eh but i mean it's still good because it's still on the board you know what i mean and then moving on to probably the best card in my opinion in terms of monsters that you can play is going to be down wrestler pank drops um i believe you just seen talked about it as well it's really good because you special pank drops you force the crimson dragon then go ahead and tribute to pop the geisha or just pop the crimson dragon things of that nature super nasty and what it does guys but that's it for the monsters so pank drops of course is the final monster now moving on to the spell cards mostly the quick play spell cards because those are like the best cards i don't think there's like any legit like normal trap or spell cards that work so again moving on of course you have super poly i was talking about it before where you can super poly legacia and crimson dragon into mud dragon in response to crimson dragon so it is really good because super poly out to their problematic monsters go into mud dragon and continue playing especially because you can prevent um targeting so they and that deck plays a lot of like imperms veilers phalanx things of that nature book of moons as well so it's pretty good speaking of book of moon guys book of moon and eclipse are also very good cards because you can go ahead and book of moon or book of eclipse them in response to the crimson dragon effect to book the legacia because the legacia is now face down crimson dragon cannot read its level so crimson dragon attempts to resolve as much as possible i believe it still goes to the extra deck but it just does not summon anymore now of course quote me if i'm wrong or you know message if i'm wrong or sue me if i'm wrong whatever but Another important ruling, guys, is very similar to DD Crone. You guys must know this is Book of Moon versus Trudea. If I normal summon Trudea and I go Trudea effect to go ahead and place herself in another monster in the spell and trap card zone, and I use Book of Moon chain link two, Book of Moon will resolve, put the Trudea face down, and then Trudea will resolve, and Trudea will move down and bring another one. So it's really important. It's very similar to Crimson Dragon, where if you, in response you Book of Moon the Crimson Dragon, Crimson Dragon will go face down and then resolve and run away and then read that the monster on the field summon out Calamities, and you don't want to lose to stuff like that, right? And again, it's very similar to Book of Eclipse. That's why the books are okay. It's kind of similar to like DD Crow where they have multiple applications. But again, just remember guys that Crimson Dragon has to resolve as much as possible. Um, meaning that if you respond or kind of target the Crimson Dragon in response, you know what I mean? So the best thing you can do is just book this. Don't book the Trudea or book the Primera in response. So it's pretty good. And moving on guys, for in Droplets, just... I guess like the flavor card you know next to super poly um being able to send cards from your hand and or field to negate is really important but just remember one thing guys you have to choose that many effect monsters your opponent controls so if i go forbidden droplet discard two target two and then my opponent somehow has a way to get one monster off the board you cannot negate just one monster so forbidden droplet will resolve without effect which is really important again it doesn't fizzle resolves without effect um similarity for rin chalice is also really good because you just like chalice the crimson dragon and they end up losing um it's more for like decks that can't afford to have the discards for forbidden droplet but i mean chalice is also really good similarly to that cosmic cyclone it's really similar to ghost dog where you can cycle in the field spell you can cycle in any of the names things of that nature it is very very good of course guys another card that people kind of wanted to play was mass dispersion this is one card destroy all face up continuous traps on the field mean that they usually have two so if you do it during like the standby phase or the draw phase you can discard and pop all the cards so they do end up losing a lot so it's pretty good especially because i believe emeth is only during the main phase if i'm not mistaken if, if this card during your opponent's turn if this card's in your hand okay um so that's not really during main phase so this is their only play around the card but um they can only save one you know what i mean so it's pretty good in that regard um i mean it does destroy so it doesn't really protect them anyways um and then moving on there is spellbound so yasin made another really good video on um spellbound i'm not going to talk too much about it make sure you guys check out his video but this card is like the quick play d barrier where it's good going first and or going second because when they go chain link to effect of the field spell to go ahead and quick synchro you can go ahead and chain spellbound to go ahead and lock them out um stop them from playing the game so it's pretty good in that regard and then of course moving on to the trap cards unending nightmare was a hot card that people were talking about initially because this card says you can pay 1,000 life points, target one face of spell trap card on the field, and destroy it. So you can almost always be um, interacting with um, stand up your centurion as well as the other cards in response. It's just that it sucks going second. It's good going first. But I mean, if you're going first and you can set up your combo, you don't really need to be playing Unending Nightmare. Look, I make it super. It's pretty funny. Um, but that's it for Unending. Then moving on to um, Typhoon. Typhoon was an also card that I thought about. I thought about buying it out as well. It says target one face of spell trap card on the field, destroy it. If your opponent controls two or more, you can activate this card from your hand, meaning that as a sixth card, it's pretty good because similar to Ghost Ogre. On top of that as well is when your opponent activates Stand-Up Centurion to go ahead and place the card in scale or 
and spawn trap card zone then they use the effect to go ahead and summon out you can in response go ahead and typhoon pop the card so now this card will no longer summon it's in the graveyard so now they're stuck in a weird place of course if they have the other extender they have the other extender and then dimensional barrier to go first um also works extremely well only going first not going second that's why spellbound's a lot better um but that's it for my video guys it's just a quick summary video i want to do a quick breakdown before people kind of like really experienced in because i know some people have the cards in mail some people have the decks this is just off of my experience of testing against in again like i said for specific cards you need to look out for um dd codes important to know the ruling similar to book of moon and book of eclipses and if you are going to be playing decks to kind of play around it then you can definitely play um chill me you also play unchanged you also play skull servant whatever um floats your boat um but that's it for the video guys of course guys check out the link down below like comment subscribe you know all the good stuff guys my name is hamza like i would say guys keep on shining you have one of your dreams peace